Johnny, right now you're looking at this beautiful artwork that I'm displaying on my screen. And turns out the author is not human. It's actually a AI drawing this beautiful painting art. We have seen that in past few years, how computers can generate beautiful art to the point that we can't even tell if it's done by a human or AI. The subject today is actually not whether a computer can draw or not. We already know that they can, but whether they actually have a copyright associated to the mm. author of the AI. For example, if I'm a creator of this AI in the US Copyright Office, they say we actually don't have a copyright to it because of the different interpretations we have in terms of the AI. And we call this generative art. That's the key term that I'll probably reference many times in this video. It reference a computer program, UI elements that are generated through the AI algorithm. We're going to talk about how it's relevant for the NFT art creators today. My name is Elisha Tarada. I'm the Technical Innovation Director at Fresh Labs. We also have Johnny here, who is a Strategic Innovation Director. Hello, hello. So you've probably seen a lot of generated NFT art in this past uh, year or two, right? Where a collection could have 10,000 images and only differences they have are like maybe some wear different hat or some have different color set or yep. maybe they're wearing different like a shoes or something. The interesting question is, are these actually copyrighted? Because on one hand, this original artist created these layers of different art that can be composed together. For example, using Photoshop, multiple layers. You can select, pick a layer from hats, pick a layer from the body, pick a layer from legs or something, and just go crazy and create 10,000 different variations of the art. But the question is, are these copyrighted? What could it mean in terms of the ownership of the art itself, right? Are you buying an art that has a copyright associated to it? Or did an author basically lose all the copyright because the US court may say, oh, you actually don't have the right to it. I wanna get I, your initial impression. I'm super interested in this topic, by the way. I have personally tried to do generative NFTs, algorithm based. I found GitHubs and I've played with things like that. I've also used Figma as a way to go and generate. And now I'm questioning, wait, was it not? Like, is it? So I'm definitely interested in the, in the answer to that. I think in my head, when I think about generative NFTs, I think of these two buckets. One is like true generative. Have you heard of Wombo art, by the way, Elisha? Uh-uh, nah. You can see it at wombo.art or app.wombo.art. Really cool, I, I was stumbled across the iOS app. You type in any phrases, any words. Yeah, maybe go to start creating on here. Let's try this really quick on the fly. Yeah. So this is one bucket of AI generative art. So maybe type in, let's try like metaverse, donkey, anything. <laughs> it's more like words than it cat. is sentences. Okay, so okay, maybe cat. put like, cause it, like Elisha won't pull up anything. Try a few words, maybe try three words. Random so that we can see it. Yeah, sure. Cat is cute. Pick a style and hit create. Like you could type in dog, city, and island, and it would generate something that does all three of those. And it's showing you oh, almost shit. layer by layer what's going on from this problem. So one category of generative art, in my opinion, is this kind of thing where it's it's true algorithmically created <laughs> art. This is really weird looking. This actually. is a really weird looking cat. Uh, cat. Uh, Try three like nouns. I think it's worth doing it. And you, you're seeing there's even a mint has NFT coming soon on this. Try like three objects that are completely random. Building. Ocean. Sure. And then pick a different art style. Maybe uh, maybe that's steampunk. steampunk. That would be cool. That looks cool. So there we go. This is a pretty, I wouldn't say it's like a super popular app, but it's popular. It's one of the better ones out there that exists. So you can already see, so see, you already see a dog. Is this a dog? Kind of. I guess it is. A it's an AI generated dog, apparently. Let's see here. And all of it's trippy. The whole point is that none of this is real. What we've been seeing with GPT-3 and all of that, this is a little different. So you're seeing a ocean, what looks like a weird looking Two thing. Dogs. I think it probably didn't really capture it. But yeah. my point is, this is truly generated by AI, right? The other form is what you talked about a little bit, which is 
if I go and create all of the layers, the shirt, the type of shoes, maybe if it's like a warrior, it could be like the armor. And then you go and build all the core layers and then that then generates a collection of a thousand. Depending on how many, you can do like a six factorial, which means six different variations of a specific layer. And then that goes and generates whatever six factorials. I don't know that off the top of my head. So I see those as two kind of categories. So I, I am hoping that we can get to the answer of are both of those technically generated by AI or because I feel like the Wombo one here definitely fits mm. the category, but I'm iffy on the if I create all the layers and I just give me all the permutations of that artwork, is mm. that considered yeah, AI? So is that copyright? Yeah, so that basically inspired the whole conversation for the NFT creators, right? Cool. For AI, there is some clear like rulings based on the history and we're looking at this article, but let's see. We can you can actually also look at copyright. Oh, there's a review that, board on this particular yeah, thing. On the particular thing, so this is very interesting to read through. But obviously, we're not going to go into that detail. It's a Ryan Abbott refusal. That kind of request for reconsideration got it, got it, got or it. refusal to resist their got arrest okay. and, yeah, entrance. And I also have this article, which I thought was very interesting and summarized a lot of different sources in one. It's on the high blog, Generative Art and the Law, who is the author, what is the legal status of the artwork generated by AI tools. And if I cut to the chase on this one is that conclusion is it's different per country. So for example, UK, when it comes to copyright for AI generated work, the protections will fall to the individual or group of individuals who created the software or made the arrangements needed for AI generated Interesting. work. So if you are in UK, then yes, you have copyright to the authorship. The next but sentence on that feels like it's more directly proportionate to your contribution. So directly proportionate with the amount of contribution that the artists of the program are put forth. So it's, yeah. it's determining what they own. So it's not 100% ownership, at least if you put in X amount of effort towards it, it might be directly proportionate to your ownership amount. Yeah, which may not be 100%. Maybe if you just use open source program, right? You, don't you are the creator of the yeah. open source thing. You have to add your own layer before you to claim I'm really the author. And in other countries like Spain and Germany, it is not matter of question because copyright protections are only offered to human authors exclusively. So maybe <laughs> don't spend too much time in AI work. If you are trying to do it under the assumption that you can get copyright to those, you may do for more research purpose or for fun, but you may not get a return in these countries you're trying to be copyright author in the US this is the biggest thing right because we live in US we are, we were interested in some of the US ruling the first is that copyright protections are not offered at all because our work is created by technology the work would instead be deemed as public domain the second option may be that a court can rule that protection under the individual are at the heart of the chain of creation if an artist and programmer got together to create an algorithm that generates a piece of work, then both those individuals would have joint copyright protection over the work. So that brings up another interesting part. The that creator of the algorithm that generates it. They mentioned artist and programmer. I think in the earlier UK example, like they basically just mentioned software and needed arrangements i don't know if the arrangement means artists putting together different layers of work in photoshop or gathering all the images for the ai models to work or something of course these things are always based on the past rulings it's never oh, here is a clearly defined definition list of when it qualifies or not you basically have to try to get copyright and then the court is going to say yes or no and that may get overruled over time. These legal things are always in motion, but let's look at the last piece. India, Ireland, New Zealand have taken approach that authorship belongs to the programmer. What about the artist who <laughs> may have some influence in the steampunk style and artists came up with some parameters for it. 
but looks like it's all attributed to the programmer itself. Right now, we're looking at AI generated art. NFT arts are not necessarily AI generated. It is generated, but more or less programmatic way. And yeah. Johnny, I think you looked into utilizing Figma to generate. I did. Right. If you're going to talk about some of the process you looked into, like how you try to yeah, finish up. I did look into that because I thought, oh, that would be really cool. I'm not seeing much out there that exists to create this. Being somebody that's comfortable in Figma, I thought I'm very used to kind of master components that have different properties and variables tied to them. And I can hit a drop down and say, OK, give it blue hair or green hair. But I wanted to be able to take that and say, hey, how do I go generate again, generate every permutation of the layers that I have essentially. So I did look around and I did some research. I want to give a shout out to Pablo Stanley, who is a pretty prominent person in the design community. He actually created bueno.art, that's B-U-E-N-O dot A-R-T. And this is essentially like a way to collect, create your collections. They don't claim this is an AI algorithm or anything like that. This is essentially a way, it's a no code tool. It does tell you there's no code and it actually generates a, a little bit higher than this. It shows okay. there, work with your favorite tools. No need to learn new tools, NFTs with Figma. I found this super cool. It's just a little expensive for me. So you can go and say, okay, I wanted to do this and this. And it's actually like a tool that helps you create 10,000, like a 10,000 collection of NFTs. The main thing is that they take a portion of the NFT sales and then you have to pay up front for when you go and actually go, okay, let me go generate these. But it's a really awesome tool. This is probably the best one that exists for a designer to go and use. And if you are willing to pay a little bit of money, this is a pretty cool tool. So this was like the best one that I found, but I was looking for a free option. I did end up stumbling across uh, a few other design related ones. This one is one that is actually a plugin community Powell Contech created an NFT generator. And it's a very similar thing. It's select a component that has all the instances of traits that you want to use. And then you hit a button and then you can see it generating all of them one by one. Like it's just like pumping them all out. And you can see on the right hand side that those are the components. Like here are my backgrounds. Here's my horse. Here are the eyes, the noses and the you know what I mean? And you generate 256 or I think it's up to 10,000 and you just need certain amounts and they show you how to set it up. So this is like a really cool way to do that. I ended up creating my own. This was great, but what I wasn't clear is if anything was gonna be replicated. I wanted to also be able to specify what's called rarity of an NFT. A specific one would be more rare than another, right? Like, okay, this one's made of gold. I want that one to only show up. I wanna give that a weight of one versus the weight of five or maybe give it the weight of five versus one. It didn't have that extra level. I basically did my best to go and do that. Mine was less like uh, avatar PFP type of NFT. And it was more around like just kind of artistic NFTs. And so I did go in and, and generate some of that. I have not gone and minted these and put them on a NFT marketplace. But since then, as you can see on this particular plugin, it does say now you can reset rarity options and remove the names and of weights in the master components used to be able to specify. So this seems like this one might be the best one out there if you're a designer where you don't have to create it from scratch, it might be good to validate, but this person's pumping out updates every three to five days since it was released back in December of last year. So pretty cool. And there's others out there that, that exist that are interesting, but I am comfortable in Figma for that matter, but it seems given the context that you just gave Elisha, Figma is the tool. Figma right. is the actual platform. Powell Contech is the plugin creator. I am the artist. And then I'm leveraging a plugin inside of Figma to go and say, give me all the permutations. Give me all of the variations that are possible for my layers that I designed. Yep. So I don't know if I'm clear in the US, does that mean, <laughs> does Figma own it? Does the plugin creator own it? Is it directly proportionate? Or do I own nothing? Right? Yeah, because artists and programmer didn't get together. It's like in isolation of just using each other's service, just leveraging. And in US, like one, it's not clear. And in some other countries, looks like it's software possibly getting the copyright. Our interesting question is, are you end up going to share copyright between like Figma and uh, Pablo Tool, the set, and then you as artist? Yep. And this is where I want to transition to more open conversation to what should be the case in our opinion. Yeah, what's the and, ideal state? Yes, because there is no clear answer right now. Just like how it took a long time for 
US government to get to the laws around cryptocurrencies. And now we owe tax right to all the transactions of cryptocurrencies we make. And that kind of stuff come later. And since NFT became really popular last year, the government hasn't really caught up to have clear ruling around who has the copyright. So this video isn't so much to provide an answer. You should do your own due diligence if you are looking to do some serious business and you might see headline like this, sorry, your NFT is worthless, the copyright, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And that's just, I would say, someone's opinion at this point because yeah. they are referencing how it wasn't working for AI, so therefore it wouldn't work for NFT, blah, blah, blah. So I wouldn't look at this as like any definitive thing. Definitive, you, yeah. you need to work with your own personal legal advisor if you're really yeah. serious. I'll add to that, that if you find tools that are generative art and they say, hey, when you go and use this, you own all of the copyright, mm -hmm. they may not be as informed and it's not as definitive there either. So right. like, even if it's claimed that, it's probably something to do a little bit of research on. Or if, for example, like yeah. Wombo, as cool as that tool is, in their terms and condition and their privacy policy, they say things like, and it does say mint as NFT coming soon. That's been there for months, probably because they're dealing with this issue. But this idea of who owns it, hold on. So if I'm generating all this stuff, could I? So there's some contradictory things there. It's also worth mentioning that right now, and I saw this on the news yesterday, Elisha, and this is on Bloomberg Law. The title is Nike NFT suit, like a lawsuit, tests new frontier for IP law in the metaverse. It's talking about Nike and a company that works with Nike and how they were selling digital shoes that then paired with physical shoes and that Nike was claiming that, that there was essentially that connection was not valid, essentially being like, that can't be your receipt that then gets you to do this because we didn't sign off on this. And they're like, oh, we have actual things tied to this. Stock X is the one that did it. This is probably foundational court like lawsuits that are happening right now that might frame and might end up informing what will happen from what we're seeing today, right? Like they might be the references that happen. Nike versus Stock X. We learned that NFTs can be seen as legal IP or whatever. Right? That might be the takeaway and something that gets referenced. There's always exceptions to that. I'm not super familiar with Nike as much, but Quentin Tarantino did a very popular movie. He's a film director, does a bunch of amazing stuff, but he did the movie Pulp Fiction and he ended up taking segments of the screenplay and selling them as NFTs. And of course, Miramax LLC, the motion picture company, they are basically like, you can't do that. We own that. He's like, no, I was the director. I did this. And so that's another lawsuit that people are keeping an eye on. But there's a few of those kind of complaints and lawsuits that relate to NFTs, IP, legal ownership and copyright and figuring that out. So it'll be interesting to see how those kind of develop that will impact this conversation as we maybe come back and do a part two, right? Things gonna change, right? This is all still in fluid motion. So the best way is to keep up with all these news and we might have update too, right? If there's something significant, maybe even referencing back to past videos because we covered some of yep. the Nike wearables and we were excited and oh wait there could be some issues to it we'll make sure to mention some of these things as we find out we want to open up for discussion and what might be meta is this video copyrighted to us or is it to the fresh consulting the company we work for and that's a kind of argument people can get into, right? Like, wait, we are the one directing and r running all the shows, like Quentin Tarantino may claim, but no, but you're sponsored or, you know, paid yeah, by- Yeah, you're under you contract know, and under everything contract, you do. Right? Yep, yep. So that's a that very interesting you. question. I'm super curious about what you do think is the ideal state. Like what would be maybe a balance of both fair for the tool creators as well as fair for the artist or the developer that's generating. Do you have a stance on that at all? So let's scope it down to, let's say NFT collection. Yep. And let's scope it down to a tool like Bueno, maybe a good example where it's an artist uploading an image. So it's not like a Wombo where there is already like algorithm that someone else wrote that generates mm -hmm. art and i don't have to be an artist let's talk about i'm an artist i have full control over 
the graphic design that I'm producing. And I'm only using these tools as rapidly creating like iterations or combinations of my art. Yeah. Not someone else's. Let's scope it to that because otherwise it could be yep. <laughs> too, too crazy. large. Of, no, I, I like that. I agree with that. that. Let's start with the Figma and Bueno, the art as like a plugin layer and then the artist layer. So Figma, I think generally should stay out of the copyright claim because all the artwork we put in, not just for the NFT, right? Like we use it for our client work. We use it for designing maybe even your logo and things like that. Figma should just stay as a tool. They don't own any copy with what happens inside the tool set. It's just a tool to enable artists, UI designers, creators to create their own copyrightable art. So in my mind, Figma is out of the equation. Yeah, and I think how many times have we gone and designed the UI of a new website or a new app that then goes and gets built and Figma doesn't own any copyright on that. So it makes sense that it's a tool to facilitate artwork and you're paying for that and the membership's more around access to the tool that enables you to do something. So I'm with you on that. So now let's talk about the middle layer, the plugins and tool sets that may utilize Photoshop or Figma as a base tool, but then they built something useful on top, right? Generative art mm -hmm. or generate combinations or a set of parameter to say, hey, I just want one person of it to be super rare and all these configurations that let NFT creators build their own unique combinations. But I'm still the artist who supply all the graphic assets. My take on it actually derives from the software open source principle where the author of the tool get to choose how they want copyright to be considered. For example, in software world, there are generally two big bucket of copyright. One that's very popular are like MIT license where, mm -hmm. hey, use the software as is. Whoever created this software, they're not going to have any liability and you can do whatever you want, like create your own software mix based on all these open source softwares. And that's very favorable because as software engineers, we like free stuff. As companies right. hiring software engineers to build tools, they don't want to have to track all the copyrights of 20 different libraries that we use. The point is to enable the world to build softwares efficiently and share this knowledge across the world, no matter who you are, right? Just because US is a rich country doesn't mean we should hoard all these good software ecosystem and make it difficult for someone in third world country to utilize the software. So I think the foundation principle is, hey, it should be free. It should be public, almost like a public domain in a sense where there is some licensing terms, right? There are some rules, but generally speaking, you don't have to contact us to use your software. You don't have to pay us any license fee. So that's a favorable one that almost every software engineers and companies prefer. And then there are other type of license where it's more restrictive. For example, if you make a modification to this open source library, you have to make that open source. You have to open source your project as well, which is not favorable for companies because oftentimes we want to own our own secrets and IPs and we don't want to share some improvements that we made that we paid our developers. And that's even somewhat mm -hmm. debatable too, but generally speaking, we don't want to have to go through a trouble of open sourcing the software that we write proprietary for our client. When we write software for a client, we don't upload it to some open source repository. We just keep it between client and us. It's private. But there are some very restrictive license where it makes it really difficult to do it. In the past, there have been some drama around the online CMS. I forgot if it was Wix or something else. I think they use some of the GPL license code from WordPress and then incorporate it into their system. But the GPL is more like a restrictive license where you have to also open source your project and things like that. But there are always some software licensing conflicts between companies like, hey, you stole our oh, code yeah. and you weren't supposed to. 
But the heart of my argument here is that whoever create the tool should have a say in if you use my tool, you are using my creative useful tool set and I'm going to own either portion of a copyright or entire copyright mm -hmm. and it's your choice as a user to engage in such agreement yeah. with my tool or not if i'm doing this for my business and i want to have my copyright to it then i can say that in my terms but if i'm just being generous right i just want to help nft creators and i don't care about copyrights i'm just gonna say in terms you can use this for whatever you want and don't ask me i don't even check this is not my stock image that i'm gonna strike you, mm -hmm. you on the usage right so my personal principle derives from software licensing where creators should be able to pick then of course that decides how much the artist in the end gets a copyright and i think artists should get the copyright as much the portion that they should be able to claim just because they use some kind of tool they shouldn't lose any copyright so figma zero copyright plugin authors they can say whatever they want and user can choose to share copyright with that creator or not and the artist should have all the remaining copyright percentage that makes a lot of sense i want to get your opinion johnny as i was asking i was thinking about i actually get having heard you walk through it i think it does make sense I, I would hope that the artist gets a lot of ownership for sure but i understand why it shouldn't be figma it makes sense to me just given the context of other creations that get made inside of figma and then are not considered copyright and then the bueno is an interesting one because it's an in-between it's somebody that's gone and spent a lot of time, created a business, registered yeah. a business. I think the only thing I would add is that if I were a company like Boy, the pricing structure could change based off of that kind of ownership. It might be more of, hey, we have a plan that is, we own X percentage of the copyright or like we own this percentage. And so our cost for you to run this is gonna be free or it's gonna be really low. Mm -hmm. And then it can be, we're gonna Got charge it. you a lot more, but you're getting like the exclusive license to this. And so you're gonna pay, and it can either be a one-time, most of for a tool like this, you're generating it once. So it'd be like a one-time payment of blank, right? I'm familiar with tools like Video Hive or Graphic River from the Envato kind of marketplace. You can buy somebody's work on graphics or video templates or whatever. And they have things like that. Like, hey, if this is a one-time use, if it's for personal use, if it's a commercial license, and if it's actually like an extended license or exclusive. So there's all these different license types. I like that structure of the artist gets to decide how much ownership they're willing to give away. But there is an option where you could own 100% of it, depending on how helpful the tool is or helpful the thing is that you're working on. So. Like for music, for example, I've gone and made music and sold music in the past. And that often gets asked, hey, can I buy license to this beat or whatever? Because I want to use it for a song. And then I'll say, yeah, great. That sounds good. It's going to be X amount, right? Then they'll say, okay, cool. You can't sell it to anybody else. And I'm like, no, no that's a different license type. And that's an exclusive license. An exclusive license is three times as much. Now I can't make any more revenue off of this. And so there's like that kind of thought process. I think synonymous and in the same kind of realm of thinking I, I generally agree with that structure of figma doesn't own any the tool can decide i just think that there's creative ways where they can do that to provide a lot of options and making it so that the artist is the most enabled the artist or developer the creator of the nft giving them the most kind of ownership and facilitating that or like giving them the chance to decide that right do i want more ownership or do i want less what am i willing to pay up front it becomes a little bit risky for them if they really believe in it and they want to be exclusive then and own 100% of it, theoretically, they could just pay outright one-time fee for it. So it's not like a binary choice, right? Like yeah. software license, it is often binary. There's no gradient of the pay scale because people are not necessarily paying, right? When they use, they're just choosing whichever. But I like the pricing scale where you could make it free or 100% copyright passed on to creators versus actually let's share our copyright. And of course, sharing copyright in itself sounds very complex. Yeah, <laughs> legal it case. does. Wait, what? How do you enforce that? How do you have that in a writing? And when you bring it to a court, I own twelve percent of this art, which you can't really break it, break the art into twelve percent and seventy-eight percent mm -hmm. or something, or eighty-eight percent. That's still an interesting debate in terms of what happens when you try to enforce that. I like the gradient of, oh, here's a choice. And just like how 
iStock photo or Shutterstock or you know premium service where you pay to download the image, there will be also counterparty Unsplash where the initiative was to just make it all loyalty free, mm -hmm. right? Why not? Let's help out、yeah. artists who don't have money. Yeah, but they still need to provide a service for providing stock images that looks really good. So I can see that even if you provide a gradient, there will be a party who comes out and、yeah. hey, let's help the community of creators and let's make it free. Yeah, maybe we should create that under this umbrella. But no, it makes a lot of sense. And unsplashes at least reference the creator, like the contributor, right? Not a requirement, but definitely a strong recommendation. Same with icons. I use flaticons.com a lot for icons, and they tell you here are all the premium ones, and then here's the free ones, completely free to use. But please reference the designer in the source code of using an application. Comment out the code, but reference the the artist, and they. Tell you how to do that. Yeah.、Um, yeah. So there are things like that, and I can imagine a whole collection gets made, and you're like, "Hey, the Bueno Arts of the world that are free, right? The Unsplash equivalent. You could be like, shout out to Bueno Art for whatever." If the people watching this video have their opinion that they want to share with us with some creative argument, we like to hear in the comment、yeah. section. We also like to follow the journey of this copyright, and maybe once in quarter, once a year, whenever there is maybe big a lawsuit happening in U.S. or there's some big ruling that happened at the Supreme Court. Maybe we can cover so you can follow, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell so you always get the notification when we have the latest video. We always try to publish you know, each week on the subject of metaverse, NFT, Web three tech, all these cool stuff we're doing. We'll see you in next video. Thank you.